This lab gem demonstrates how to use general linear model for factorial analysis of variance, including some post hoc tests. Okay, so I have Minitab already open, and you should have downloaded this file from Moodle, ANOVA Voice Data, um, and it's a, a worksheet, and you have gender, you have voice, and you have height. So what we're looking at here is whether there are differences or even an interaction between um, the individual's gender and whether they have a high or a low voice. So, for example, um, a, a baritone um, or an alto for a woman or a soprano or a tenor for a man um, and the individual's height. So we might expect that gender would play a role here, that there's actually uh, an interaction between gender and voice for height. So to get started, we come up here to STAT, click on that, and we come down to ANOVA. Now, general linear model is going to be your kind of um, most general way to run an analysis of variance. You could certainly use one-way analysis, um, the one-way analysis, or a balanced ANOVA, but that only works if you have equal n. So this is the most flexible. So this is a little bit different than what had been in the previous version, um, but what we want to do is select fit general linear model. So I'm okay, so the first step is that we need to get our dependent variable, which goes in this responses category. So if I put my cursor in this box, then I can come over here and click on height, which is our dependent variable, and then choose select. And if we're going to do a one-way analysis of variance, and we're interested in, say, looking at gender differences, then we would come over and click on gender and click select. Now we have a number of other options and things down here. Um, I would just say for our purposes that we can just go ahead and say OK. So, so we have in the session window our results up here, and we can scroll up to the top. And we'll see height versus gender. So the first variable is our dependent variable, and gender is our output. It tells us how the uh, factors were coded. Um, that's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about in this course. Um, it does tell us that gender is a fixed variable with two levels, 0 and 1. And then we have our source table, which should look pretty familiar to you at this point. There's one new column that you would want to be um, interested in, which is our p-value. And this is where we find out whether or not our p-value for our particular f-test is less than 0 0.05. And if you compare this value to 0 0.05, you'll see that 0 0.000 is actually less than 0 0.05. So the source gender is a significant effect right here. And you can also tell just by looking at this f-value f value is 155. That's huge. So that's another indication as well that it's likely to be significant. Another thing I want to point out is that instead of saying um, the source is within subjects, uh, Minitab uses um, error as their um, within subjects factor. Um, you'll see that in other sources as well. And um, here, we have the model summary for the effect size. So what this tells us is that our R squared, or our adjusted R squared, which is what I would report, um, is 54.56. So that says that by knowing something about the gender of the individual, it explains 54.56% of the variability in height. So this is a good predictor. That's our effect size. Now, the rest of this part is essentially about how uh, analysis of variance is related to regression. It's actually a special case of regression. So um, I'm not going to get too much into that. We can skip over it for now. So let's say now that we want to take into account both gender and voice. So we do a new analysis. Again, come up to statistic, down to ANOVA and down to general linear model. And now we want to fit a general linear model. And this is going to use, again, the same variable of height 
We're still going to use gender, but now we also want to add voice. So I'll come over here and select voice. And the next thing I need to do is come down here where it says model. Um, it won't allow us in the factors box anymore to type in our interaction effect. So we have to come into this model part. So it shows us in this bottom box, terms in the model, gender, voice, and we want to get an interaction term. So in order to do that, we have our factors box up here, and we select both gender and voice. And it's automatically going to say interactions through order two. I'm not going to get into any details about what that would be um, different from for order one. Just know that use order two and then say add. And you'll see gender by voice gets added to this bottom uh, term in the model. If you want to remove anything from the model here, you just click, click on the X, select it and click on the X. But you wouldn't necessarily have any reason why you'd want to do that um, for our purposes. Okay. So then you say OK. And it doesn't show up, that interaction term doesn't show up here, but you'll see it in the output. And I'm going to click OK again. So let's do this. We'll come here. And we need to scroll up again. I just made this bigger so we can see more of it. OK. So let's look at this again. Um, now we have height versus gender and voice. And so this is our dependent variable again, and gender and voice are two independent variables. And it tells us again how this information was coded. We get down to our source table. This is the interesting part. And we see that we have three between subject sources, gender, voice, and the interaction term. And each one of those has de one degree of freedom. We have our sums of squares, our mean square, our f values, and our p value. And we always start with the interaction term. So if we look at the interaction term here, our f value is 1.04. Just by looking at that, that's probably unlikely to be significant. And if you look at this p value, well, it's 0 0.309. And so it's definitely greater than our um, critical value, or our p value, excuse me, of 0 0.05. So we are not going to be interpreting an interaction effect. That means we should go on to these next two effects of gender and voice, our main effects. Um, top row is gender, the second row is voice, and we can interpret both of those if they're statistically significant. If we look at our p-value, the, the difference for gender is statistically significant, as well as for voice. They're both less than 0 0.05. And this combined model, so gender plus voice plus the interaction, um, accounts for 56% of the variability in height. So just by thinking back to that R squared that we had previously, um, knowing something about their voice doesn't add a lot of um, variability that's accounted for, but it is a significant amount given that that effect is also statistically significant. OK, giving over the regression stuff here. Um, and so the next thing that we need to do, actually, is we can do some post hoc tests um, because we found statistically significant main effects. So again, we come to stats, ANOVA, general linear model. And now we can come down to the second one under fit general linear model that says comparisons. And it allows you to compute the different comparisons you're interested in. So if I click this, then we want our dependent variable to be height. We want pairwise comparisons. And we'll use a two-key here. Now, technically, we really don't need to do a post-talk analysis because we already know that there's only two groups for gender and two groups for voice. So the only place we can have a difference for gender is between males and females. And the only place we can have a difference for voice is between high voices and low voices. And it doesn't matter whether or not we have um, the interaction included because it's not statistically significant. So we need to choose our terms for comparison. So I'll click on gender and then come down here where it says C, compare levels for this item. So I'll click on that. And I want to do that for voice as well. Um, and the reason we're doing this is just so that you have worked through this process and you can kind of understand what the output would be in case you wanted to do this kind of analysis in the future. Um, and we're not going to click on the gender by voice because 
it's not statistically significant. And then we can say, OK. So it gives us a bunch of graphs. I'm going to minimize those. Um, these give you confidence intervals. Um, it, and basically what it says is, if an interval does not contain zero, the corresponding means are significantly different. This interval for voice does not contain zero. Okay. So they're statistically significantly different. So low voices are significantly taller than high voices. Um, we will see this also for gender. Here's zero over here. And it definitely does not include zero. So again, that's statistically significant. But let's look at our session window output here. Let's scroll back up a minute so we can see. So those give us a graphic representation of the confidence interval. We haven't spent too much time talking about them. Um, but we can look here and say, OK, well, our gender for uh, males, right, one, their mean height is 69.93 inches. And we get an A grouping over here. And for females, average height is 64.56. Um, we get an, a grouping of B here. So what they do in order to say whether or not these are statistically different is that means that do not share a letter are different. So males have an A and females have a B, so they're not, um, they don't have the same letters, so they're statistically significantly different. And we can see the same thing down here for voice, where we have um, people with low voices are on average 67.8 inches tall, and they get an A. And those with high voices are 66.7 inches tall on average, and they get a B. So means that do not share that letter is significantly different. So we know that low voices are significantly taller than high voices. So that's how we um, run a, a factorial analysis of variance, a one-way analysis of variance, and um, some post hoc tests using general linear model and mini-cap.